You're watching CBS 8 Mornings at 5. So glad you are with us here and glad the band is back together yes. here. I'm Eric Connor. And I'm Netta Irambar. We literally have full staff in all areas on our morning show. <laughs> and we it's literally nice have been catching up on all the time yeah. off of what everyone's been doing in these little commercial breaks. <laughs> so many do. more questions I have about your trip and everything. But anyway, welcome back. Thank you very much. It's great to be back. Great to have all of us together. And uh, Evan in the house uh, bringing us a good looking forecast right there. Look uh, I mean, hey, off to the east of us, we've got excessive heat warnings in effect. We, however, are staying cool thanks to that sea breeze. Along the immediate coastline clouds are down to about 2000 feet, meaning they are affecting visibility in some spots, but that shallow marine layer is actually going to do a lot to stay put as opposed to spread too far inland. Right now we are along our western valleys, but yesterday those clouds pushed all the way to lakeside today. Not so much the case and that uh, offshore breeze yesterday helped us out quite a bit and given us more sunshine as early as 9 10 AM today. We should have a decent amount of sunshine across the board, partly cloudy skies at times temperatures warming up to the average range along the coastline warmer than average inland 84 is what we're looking at inland 85 for those mountains and 107 for the deserts coming up. We'll talk about how warm we'll get into tomorrow and about the cool down on the way for the weekend. Well, this morning the search is picking back up for a missing teen after a rip current dragged him out from Mission Beach. Two other teenagers are safe. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol joining us live in Mission Beach with where the search stands. There's a lot of people out there when this all happened. Dana Marie. Eric and Netta, it was an all hands on deck rescue mission. Lifeguards tell us that it suspended yesterday at sunset while they were looking for that missing teen. It does continue this morning. Lifeguards tell us that all three were standing on a sandbar when they were swept away by a strong current. This person just slipped under the surface as we were rescuing the other two. It all happened around 3.30 yesterday afternoon. A San Diego Fire Rescue lifeguard was watching the beach near Jersey Court and Mission Beach. They spotted a group of swimmers and noted that one appeared to be in distress. That late chief lifeguard says that three teens had been standing on a sandbar when that rip died came through. Lifeguards had a quick response, making it out to them in within 10 seconds. Lifeguards immediately called for more research resources to search the area. The SDFD helicopter was dispatched and additional lifeguards entered the water to search using personal watercraft, rescue boats, surfboards and lifeguards swimming in the water. After about 75 minutes of searching, lifeguards deemed this a recovery effort using sonar and continued using a helicopter to search. Now authorities say that rip current was very strong yesterday, which made the search even more challenging. Again, yesterday that rescue mission stopped at recovery effort around sunset. It will pick up again this morning. We will be live here all morning long looking for any updates that come in. Again, two teens are safe this morning. One still out there many are uh, going to continue looking for that this morning. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from Mission Beach. Right now, deputies in San Marcos need your help finding a man who was caught on camera shooting at another man. So take a look at some of this video here. It happened May 1st in the parking lot of 49er Bar and Grill. That's West Mission Road near Knoll Road. When deputies got there, they found the man who had been shot at, but the gunman got away. So you see a little activity here on the screen. Uh, there's a person walking on the boardwalk. Uh, nobody was hurt in that incident. The gunman described as Hispanic between 5'6 and 5'8, about 170 pounds pounds with black hair. He was last seen wearing glasses, a gold chain, black shirt and pants with white shoes. If you have information, call the sheriff's de de department. A memorial is growing for a 15 year old boy who was shot and killed early Saturday morning in Lemon Grove. This boy right here, while another 15 year old is in custody, accused of killing him. Omar Marquez Jr. was shot and killed just two doors away from his home near Palm and Mulder Streets. Also just two miles away from Mount Miguel High School, where both Omar and the suspect were students. I don't think he ever had like any grudges like he was always happy he had the biggest smile ever. He was always happy. He never fought. He always put smiles on other people's faces. Mount Miguel High School is offering grief counseling to students. Meanwhile, the teen suspect is scheduled to appear in juvenile court tomorrow morning.
And after the recent mass shootings, San Diego County Supervisors, they're focusing on implementing more policies to address gun violence, and they voted to seek out policy recommendations that would allow them to sue manufacturers for gun-related deaths. The county's chief administrative officer will now consult with the sheriff and other departments to come up with recommendations. After that, the board will explore their legal options. Right now, there is new hope on the progress of gun control. At this time, Senate negotiators say they could finish writing bipartisan firearms legislation this week. The legislation would require enhanced background checks for gun buyers under 21, funding for mental health and social security programs, and the bill would crack down on people who illegally buy and traffic firearms. Right now, people are working hard to put this framework into legislative language. Uh, the goal is to have that done in the coming days, and I hope that we'll be able to vote to pass this next week. Later today, two separate House and Senate committees will meet to talk about the impact of gun violence. And a Supreme Court ruling on Roe versus Wade could come as early as today. Congress has approved a bill to boost security for justices and their immediate family members. The bill was approved by the House after Senate approval last month. Supreme Court police say they've seen an uptick in threats. The bill allows police to provide around-the-clock protection to justices and their families when it is deemed necessary. New this morning, allegations have been made about sexual misconduct by a Granite Hills High School teacher. Grossmont Union High School District released a statement that says, in part, the district notified officials as soon as they found out about the allegations and reported this to Child Protective Services. The district also says if actual misconduct is found, the district will take appropriate disciplinary action up to and including dismissal. Right now, an investigation is underway. Right now, investors waiting for a Federal Reserve's announcement today expected to happen regarding interest rates. The U.S. Central Bank said to be considering increasing our short-term rates by as much as three-quarters of a percentage point, and that would be the Fed's biggest hike in nearly three decades. Here's Naomi Ruckham with the latest from New York. Alan Greenspan was Federal Reserve Chairman the last time the central bank raised interest rates by three-quarters of a percentage point in 1994. Today, Chairman Jerome Powell and Fed governors could repeat history as they try to tame inflation that's close to 40-year highs. If they raise rates by too much or too quickly, they run the risk of slowing things down so much that we tip into a recession. With so much economic uncertainty, Wall Street remains on edge. On Tuesday, the S&P 500 extended its move into bear territory more than 20 percent below the broad market index's January record. Rising prices for housing, food, and other essentials like gas are making it hard for Americans to make ends meet and raising recession fears. As a family, we will be focused on our spending and our saving, you know, hunkering down. In San Antonio, Texas, Kyle Green says record gas prices have him taking the bus for now. I save a lot of money, like, not getting on the road, I'll say that. This past weekend, gas prices hit more than $5 a gallon for regular on average nationally for the first time ever, according to AAA, and remains there today. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. There is a new look at San Diego International Airport here this morning. Demolition is beginning today for the Terminal 1 parking lot, as well as the Sky Bridge and the escalators. This is all part of a multi-year expansion of both terminals. There is quite a lot of construction happening um, at Terminal 1, but again, you know, even if you're flying out of Terminal 2, we still suggest that you plan ahead and arrive at least two hours early. Eventually, there will be a five-story parking plaza at Terminal 1 and two sky bridges honestly i'm looking forward to chris grow's live report from this uh, yeah. because i don't know where to go i'm always at terminal one so if that's not there and yeah, the sky bridge i mean the detours for this one are going to be around. very interesting and this is going to mm. last a while yeah and then the timing on this years. too with uh you know the busy tourist season mm -hmm. and everything and uh boy this is one of those things you wish could have slid into the covid time when right. things when were no being used traveling. as much yeah, yeah i feel like i mean we always know that it's easy to get in and out of san diego international so now is kind of the time where you might have to factor in some buffer space there uh for if you're traveling to the airport uh 509 right now on the clock we are looking live outside this is what we have 
from Otai Mountain. We've got a beautiful sunrise. Uh, clouds are out there a little bit harder to make out than previous mornings. You could see that skyline and then right below that you see some of those clouds lingering. What we see this morning is that those clouds are very low down to the ground, meaning that fog is an issue, but not too much of an issue this morning. Uh, that could be good news, though, for our eastern valleys, for our mountains, deserts, where conditions are going to be ripe for warming. Uh, we're going to have those temperatures warm relatively quickly into the morning, especially without those clouds. And then along the coast and for your western valleys, we'll see those clouds pull back as the day goes on. So we're expecting at least uh, partial sunshine countywide this afternoon. Temperatures are going to be in the low 70s across the coastline. We haven't seen those temperatures fluctuate all that much. We've stayed with the upper 60s and low 70s for coastal communities. The coolest we'll get over the next uh, eight days or so is going to be about 68 degrees, and then we'll warm back up to maybe 73 as the warmest. Uh, inland, we have a much bigger fluctuation in temperatures. So 84 is where we're at for this afternoon. And it looks like uh, tomorrow will warm up even more and then we cool down to the 70s as we head into your weekend. Friday and Saturday are those coolest days. That's when we'll encounter mainly mid and upper 70s as opposed to the 80s. Mountains are going to cool down dramatically back down to the 70s. Deserts are going to cool to the 90s. So enjoy today and tomorrow with the warmth that we have as we have some cooler temperatures on the way. As I mentioned, some of those clouds are a little bit lower down to the ground, not causing any tremendous issues related to visibility. However, up in Fallbrook, we're at four miles. We we're going for a perfect 10. So a couple spots on the map like Ramona because those clouds are not reaching all that far are at that 10. Otherwise, though, Brownfield at six, Kearney Mesa at seven, Carlsbad at eight miles, Oceanside at six. So working through a little bit of cloud cover and limited visibility out there. Walking out the door, you're mainly in the 50s and 60s. We've got 60 for Carlsbad and Del Mar, 61 for San Diego, 58 for Poway and 56 for Alpine. Very mild overnight as we head toward the afternoon. We warm up very nicely. Plenty of sunshine in the mix coming up. We'll talk about how cool we're going to get as we head into the weekend and what happens in the next week. It doesn't look like we're going to see those temperatures uh, stay in that cool range. We in fact have another warm up coming details on that in just a bit.